All right, let's talk about fancy goldfish. What I've got right behind me, my 800 gallon aquarium. Now you don't need an aquarium nearly as big, but we do wanna go over some parameters here and a few basic rules. Now all rules can be broken. Know that everyone's seen a thing that's been done differently. This is what I found that has worked well for me and many of our customers in our retail store and advising online. And so when it comes to a fancy goldfish, they're a man-made fish, meaning they don't exist in the wild. We bred them for certain traits. Some are more finicky than others, but for the most part, this will work for all of them. Uh, the first thing I would say is kind of tank size. There's a lot of controversy about that. Do they get a bull? Do they get a tank? My personal opinion is 20 gallons per goldfish with at least 10 gallons every other goldfish. So let's think about that. If you have one fancy goldfish in a 20 gallon aquarium, long term, five, six years, it's gonna really outgrow that and you're gonna be a slave to those water changes. But maybe you've got five goldfish, right? And now you've got it in a, a 60 gallon or a 70 gallon aquarium. You're gonna be less likely to have to water change all the time and there's gonna be a lot more room. So you do run into some physical constraints, you know, a 10 gallon aquarium that's this wide and really long is not nearly as good as something squattier and lots of room uh, to swim around. And that's why you might see in China and stuff like that, they have these big bowls that they grow fancy goldfish in because there's a lot of surface area there. And surface area does matter for swim space, oxygen transfer and things like that. Now. Always get the biggest aquarium that you can reasonably afford to take care of, you know. So if you're buying a 20 gallon, maybe you just upsize to that 29 or that 40 gallon. Uh, not too much more money because all the equipment's more or less the same. Uh, and then from there, I highly recommend uh, filtration of some type. Hang on back filter works well. Sponge filters work well. Uh, pretty much anything's going to work so long as you service it. Uh, maybe not an underground filter, but those are hard to find nowadays anyway. Uh, I would add air though, just like we've got going right back here. Doesn't have to be that strong, but air is going to help oxygen transfer up at the top and make sure we have got a lot of oxygen in the water for these goldfish. Now, one of the ways to keep oxygen there is keep the water cooler. And this is a cool water fish. They naturally want to be cooler in temperature. And what I mean by that is Anything above 75 starts putting stress on them. And they can go very cold. I wouldn't say much below 50 or so. They start, you know, also getting negative effects down there, but somewhere between like 50 and 70. So kind of room temperature without a heater is kind of a good place to be, unless you're in a very hot climate. Then you might actually have to cool the water a little bit and you can research how to do that. Um, pH, we want the pH above seven at all times. It can be even above eight, but we don't wanna go way too far above eight either. So somewhere between seven and eight is pretty safe range to be in. And I like using what comes out of my tap if I can. So if you're at eight two, just keep it eight two, don't change it. If you were at six nine, just add a little bit of crushed coral to get you to buffer up a little bit there. And do we need to do water changes all the time? No, we don't. We need to change water based on the waste. So if we're measuring our aquarium, and we see that nitrates are elevated and above 40, we need to start doing some water changes. That might be 30 to 50% at a time. And then we continually monitor it and we build a schedule. So it might mean you're changing the water once a week. Could mean every three days, could mean every month. But we wanna kinda of get a schedule and keep up on it and check in on it. That's the important part there. And as these fish grow, that could be more and more frequent, right? So we might need a larger aquarium or to rehome some of these fish. Now, when it comes to feeding, that's where this is really gonna impact water quality. If we feed some really low quality food with lots of fillers, and we feed them tons and tons and tons, that's gonna lead, a lot of, lead to a lot of waste, might be more water changing. If we use something like frozen foods or uh, like a, a plant like duckweed, something like that's gonna feed pretty clean, if you will, and it might extend the time between water changes, which is sometimes what we desire. And I really like frozen brine shrimp. I really like high quality pellets. I like uh, extreme peewee pellets. I like uh, New Life Spectrum. I like Northfin. I like Hikari. There's a bunch of great brands, but kind of what you spend is what you get. If you spend by a little bit higher quality pellet, you're going to get a little bit less maintenance and a little bit better color out of your fish. So that's nice. Um, what we don't want to do is we don't really want to mix goldfish with other types of fish. It's not that it can never be done. 
it's that you wouldn't want to do it as a beginner and you can have choking problems, you could have different types of food problems, you can even run into uh, bullying problems where either the goldfish is bullying that fish or vice versa. So in general we run a fancy goldfish only tank and there's other videos that you can view that would be uh, potential tank mates. Um, yeah, that's this video, just goldfish. Uh, as far as also extending the life between water changes and enrichment, I like to use plants. This behind me here has a crinum. That's a kind of expensive, slow growing plant. Uh, but Java ferns and Anubias and African ferns, those are all great because they attach to wood or rock. This one, I've got it planted inside of a rock. So it was a big rock with a hole in it. We put the plant inside of it so they can't dig it up. You could do that with Amazon swords, you could do it with crypts, you could do it with all kinds of stuff. We sell lots of plants online, but you can get them anywhere, local club, local store. But I do like that kind of base around it so they can't dig it up. That happens quite frequently because they're churning the substrate all the time. That's what they do. They swim around, they grab mouthfuls of food, looks for little tidbits, and they eat. They're a fish that wants to eat all day long. So they're always going to be bagging. If they're not, that could be a sign that you've got problems going on. Uh, but feed them a couple of times a day, maybe. And what I mean by that is not a handful each time, but if you were going to feed a handful, it's half a handful each time, right? Smaller meals are better. We don't want them to get bloated. There's a lot of, I want to call a miss, like we can't feed floating food. I feed floating food to my guys all the time. Uh, what we do find though is overeating is a problem, whether it's a floating food or a sinking food. So we're better to underfeed than overfeed. It's very rare to see a skinny, fancy goldfish, almost non-existent, honestly. And monitor them and spend time interacting with them. And there's going to be times when they're lethargic. And like this fish has always been lethargic. We put meds through it. We've gotten it more active, but it's still not a super active fish. And then you've got ones that are overactive and just swimming all the time. And each one's got a personality. Think of it like a dog, right? But the goal is to know what is the personality of that fish? Is it acting normal? Does it need a water change? Do we need to check in on water parameters? All those things matter. Just like when you know your dog is sick, you go, oh, missed dinner. Oh, didn't do this like it normally would. Or, oh, it's coming alive and swimming around now that we talked about it. Those are all good things. And that's really the relationship with goldfish. They're known to be a hard fish and not good for beginners, but because they require time and actually learning about that individual fish. Not so much watching this video and knowing about goldfish, but each individual fish is going to be different in itself. There's lots of breeds. Some have deformities that make it hard to see. Uh, I have Arandas in there that the wen, the big brain looking thing, starts covering their eyes and we have to do a little bit of surgery. We have uh, other ones that don't have, let's say, dorsal fins, so they swim slower than another type of goldfish. But in general, you want to make sure that they're all getting along and they're not getting beat up, they're not breeding too aggressively because they can be an aggressive breeder. And monitoring temperature, I find that's the biggest thing people forget to monitor is temperature. And then really monitor pH and nitrates. If you can monitor those three, for the most part, you will have a successful fancy goldfish aquarium. If you just monitor those once a week, it's really hard to get off track. But then Christmas sets in and we get a little bit lazy and all that kind of stuff happens, right? And then it's been a few weeks and we, oh, the pH is crashing and the nitrates are going up. And all of a sudden we weren't feeding as much and they are eating on the plants and all this stuff's going on. And it creates a scenario where we get into trouble. And goldfish in general, are a very hardy fish. They will take a lot more abuse than a wild caught tetra or something like that. Not that we ever want to put them there, but they can just handle a lot. And so they allow us uh, more leeway, which means we should be able to keep them very, very easily if we were adhering to that. The big stigma with goldfish comes from people that are new to the hobby get it, don't get the right advice never change water, never get the right size aquarium, never do all these things, and then they have the goldfish die. Well, if we enter this in as a reasonable aquarist, and we apply the same principles of testing that water, and there's more things to test, but these are the ones long-term forever, 10 years from today, I'm still gonna look at pH, I'm still gonna look at water temperature, I'm still gonna look at nitrates. At the beginning, maybe you're also looking at ammonia, and nitrite, and maybe KH, and learning a little bit about your water. But long term, no matter how successful you are in the hobby, 
you'll never get away from monitoring those three when it comes to goldfish. And uh, you know, we're gonna service equipment, we're gonna gravel vac, we're gonna do all the normal things we do to any other aquarium. The only difference really is that these fish get quite big, very big bodies, and they don't like to get hot. Other than that, it's pretty easy. Just remember, just because you have one goldfish, the mass on some of these fish in here are so big that they're equal to two or 300 tetras, right? So when we start thinking about a 20 gallon tank, we wouldn't necessarily put two or 300 tetras in there without a lot of water changes. We do that at the store, but at home we wouldn't because that's so much work. Kind of the same thing, you see like, oh, I see why that big, big goldfish might graduate out of a 20 gallon five, six years down the road because we'll become a slave to those water changes. So hopefully that's kind of helped you. Uh, we've got a video coming up right here that's gonna be about goldfish foods. And then we've got a uh, playlist over here that's gonna help you as well. Choose one of those, continue to educate yourself, and you will be successful with Fancy Goldfish.